Bases have buildings to destroy, lanes have creeps to farm and towers to push, and the jungle? The jungle has everything else. Temporary buffs, juke spots, warding locations, and game-changing sources of power all find their home in the jungle. Let's take a look at everything the jungle has to offer players of League of Legends and Dota 2. The most commonly found interactable element in the jungle is the jungle creek camps, or monsters. Scattered throughout the neutral and semi-neutral space of the map are creeps, hostile to all but themselves, ready and waiting to hurt anyone that procs aggro. And in Dota's case, this includes lane creeps as well. In both games, these jungle creeps provide the killer with both gold and experience, though with slightly different rules. In Dota, all experience in the game is given in an AoE around the dying unit to enemy heroes of that unit. You can leech jungle experience from allies and enemies alike. Pride of the drow. League's jungle creeps only give experience to their killer. Funnily enough, the boss monsters of each game are, each in turn, exempt from the rules behind experience bounties governing the rest of the jungle. The regular jungle creeps in both games also have special powers that they'll use against invaders. In League, all jungle creeps have a leash mechanic that, when triggered, starts rapidly healing the creeps, often to full HP. When I play in the League jungle, I find this giga healing extremely frustrating since there's hardly any damage I can do to overcome it. Your only choice is to just tank the monsters so they don't reset. Dota's jungle creeps trade the healing of a leash reset for a variety of other abilities. Some creeps will disarm you. I'm under attack. Others will summon help. There are creeps with chain lightning, AoE stuns, shockwaves, slowing attacks, and much, much more. Every single creep in Dota's jungle has unique abilities of some sort, and most will use them against any incoming threat. Another difference between the jungle creeps in both games is that there's no standard ranged creeps in the League of Legends jungle. And even then, only two of the three boss monsters in League will use ranged attacks. Said briefly, expect almost all your jungle farm to be against melee units in League of Legends. In the standard jungle area of League, players will find two special monsters on each side of the map, commonly referred to as buffs. Killing these will grant restorative buffs to your champion for a short time, which will also provide the killer and chosen friend with combat advantage. Dota takes a much more accessible approach to jungle buffs. Rather than killing creeps to acquire their powers, buffs are freely gained by clicking on power roots, which spawn in contested parts of the river close to the mid lane. These can provide a wide selection of power-ups, including invisibility, bonus damage, max movement speed, and more. Dota features a second way to get direct boost through killing standard neutrals. Periodically, slain creeps will drop special items you can pick up and use for free. These items will grow in power as the match progresses. Early items might grant stats or regeneration, while the strongest items include one that automatically reflects spells at the caster and another that grants health, movement speed, unobstructed pathing, and trample damage all at once. The stuff goes crazy wild, but you can only carry one of these special items at a time. Now that we've covered the standard neutral creeps in both games, it's time to look at the bosses. Starting with Baron and Roshan. Each one is designed to be difficult, though not impossible to solo. Roshan has a chance to bash on attack, limiting the damage of the guy he's hitting, while Baron straight up halves the damage to those he attacks. Both have AoE abilities for teams to worry about, but Baron's are well telegraphed and in a big open arena, while Roshan's slam is near impossible to dodge, and his arena is so tiny that you basically should expect to get hit. Both of these bosses also have some strange and unique properties that don't appear anywhere else in the jungle. Baron can't move to chase you out of the arena at all. On top of that, he has a constant aura around himself that lowers combat resistances of his attackers. 
Roshan, on the other hand, has this weird logic that stops heroes outside of the arena from auto-attacking him, which can be exceptionally frustrating to figure out as a beginner. Also, every day-night cycle, Roshan will just up and leave his home and go to the other side of the map, no matter if he's in combat or not. Very bizarre. Baron and Roshan might not share that much in similarities of their combat strengths, but in the end they are both team objectives, being highly contested and very difficult to slay without enough gathered power. When killed, their rewards are drastically different. As Baron is meant to be killed by a team, on death he grants all alive champions of the killing team a temporary buff. The buff has some combat advantages, sure, but uniquely, it also spreads to nearby lane creeps, increasing their resiliences to very high levels. The Baron buff is designed to be a premier pushing power-up and often spells the end of a lane, sometimes even the end of a game. Roshan instead drops items that anyone can pick up and use. The most powerful of these is the Aegis of Immortality, a one-time use guardian angel. Back before the arrow fired has fallen. On consecutive kills, Roshan drops the Aegis still, as well as a small variety of other items. Each reward dropped by Roshan always only buffs just the one hero that picks it up, as opposed to how Baron buffs the entire team equally. There's far more risk in how the Aegis is used, as it becomes the responsibility of a single player to use their second life effectively. Roshan and Baron aren't the only bosses on the map though. League has two other bosses that are significantly easier to kill. Before Baron spawns in at 20 minutes of game time, you can choose to fight the Herald, a boss straight out of Heroes of the Storm. Kill her, and get an item that lets you summon her once to help you push a lane. On the other side of the map, you can find and fight the elemental dragons. Each one slain grants your team powerful permanent buffs, including bonus regeneration, shields, damage, and more. If two dragons die, the map will change at a global level to incorporate the elemental theme of the third dragon. Looking at Dota again, it sports a set of two respawning mini-bosses, but these these are the most bizarre things yet. Floating, stationary, passive cubes with a single point of health and a scaling shield with insane regeneration and an insane amount of damage return. These act more like DPS checks than anything else and usually require the ADC to be downed. Kill one, and a player on your team is rewarded a free Aghanim's Shard, an item otherwise bought for 1400 gold. It's a nice way for the team to help buff their support players. Aside from just having things to kill, the jungle also has a set of secondary objectives that players of League and Dota need to worry about. The first on the list is Vision Control. League provides players with free items that grant each player that buys it the ability to place wards down every few minutes. Most of these wards get used in brushes and in the jungle to keep tabs on the enemy movement. Dota's wards are a bit trickier to use as they are a limited shared resource between all players on a team. There's only a small stock of them in the shop, and they regenerate slowly. To supplement the wards, the jungle has a couple of neutral ward buildings. Capture these for some extra vision in key locations. The last objective that I want to cover is one so simple that I almost left it out. Control of the jungle and your team's influence of it opens up pathways you can use to gank. It's one thing to reinforce a fight from the lane, and another to jump out from behind trees for some surprise murder. And that's it, the major jungle objectives of both games. 
I know, I've skipped quite a few, but honestly, I felt like already at the base of the meta iceberg of jungling, and I don't want to plunge into the depths just yet. I hope you've liked this video enough for a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe and bell and stuff to get notified when part 2, the jungler role comparison, comes out. See you then! Oh, and if you want to learn some Dota, join the Discord!